That river, broad and deep, moves ever east, past Nowth, Douth and Newgrange, under the Mary McAleese Bridge, through Drogheda, and meets the sea at Mornington. And it is there that our patron saint entered the mouth of the Boyne on his way a millennium and a half ago to light the paschal fires on the hill of Slane that would put him on a collision course with the Druids and Ireland on the path to Christianity. Or did he? Local historian and mythical Ireland tour guide Anthony Murphy told me that you're always on shaky ground with Patrick and facts. He stopped here on his way up to the north. He met a Druid here who uh, uh, was displeased with the whole idea of Christianity and uh, Patrick blessed the place and apparently the, the earth swallowed the Druid whole. Which when you look at the kind of boggy nature of the area around us doesn't sound completely impossible. Yeah, could be anywhere under our feet. Um, but when Patrick came back down from Ulster he came to the Boyne Estuary again. And I, when I bring visitors to Slane in particular, I talk about how there was a, a strategy behind the lighting of the Paschal Fire on the Hill of Slane. First and foremost, the strategy was to uh, to do so in full view of the king and, you know, the, the pagan political centre of Ireland at Tara, which is only, you know, 10 miles to the south from Slane and visible. But also... You know, if you turn your gaze eastwards from Slane, you see the great monuments of Brunabonia. And of course, in the tripartite life, Patrick, specific, it is specifically said that he chose my Bray or the, the plain of Brega because of its association with idolatry and paganism. So there was a clear strategy at work here. Kings to the left of him, pagans to the right of him, and he was figuratively flicking two fingers in both directions. I think so. I think that's quite clear. And and if you read now, look, uh, I hope this doesn't offend any of your listeners, but I'm an agnostic and uh, raised as a Catholic. For me, much of what is written about St. Patrick is fable. It's very mythological, you know. And he appears to repeat some of the feats of the earlier pagan heroes and the way he strides in off the islands, off Skerries, sounds very much like something Finn McCool was doing. If we leave aside the snakes and jumping across several miles of water in a single stride, if we leave all of that out of the equation, the lighting of the fires is historical fact, is it? Well, no. Ah, OK. I'm not so sure. The story of Patrick is at least suspicious. Did you know, for instance, that uh, when Patrick finally made it to Tara, having lit the Paschal fire and subdued the Druids who came to Slane to attack him, that he made 12,000 people drop dead all at once at Tara, according to the uh, tripartite life. No, this yeah. was um, strangely not what is talked about when we think about Patrick. No. Can we say with any certainty that he did sail past us on this little stretch of water here and put in at this point on the Boyne. I don't believe we can say that with certainty. It's been said that the known facts about Patrick could be written on the back of a postage stamp, but the legendary material about him fills many volumes. Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland. It would have been nice for the weekend that's in it to end our journey down the Boyne, certain that I was now walking in St. Patrick's footsteps. But it kind of misses the point when you think about how many others have used or been inspired by the Boyne. The High Kings, the Druids, Oliver Cromwell, King Billy, Francis Ledwidge, William Wilde, and the scores who today continue to take so much pleasure from it. This has been a fascinating journey. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll do another river soon. In the meantime, have a great weekend.